Let's have a look at some food poison bacteria then. First of all, Salmonella, quite common. Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium botulinum, two bacteria from the same family. Bacillus cereus and Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus, bit of a mouthful, but one which you must be aware of and remember because human beings are the natural reservoir for this bacteria. It's in our bodily fluids. If we cough or sneeze over food or handle food when we unwash our hands, we can transfer that bacteria onto the food and subsequently make people ill. Bacillus cereus is the bacteria we associate with rice poisoning. If you've ever eaten any rice and become ill, this is probably the causative agent. Pathogenic microorganisms will give rise to the four major symptoms of food poisoning i.e. nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps and diarrhea. Some will only produce one or two of those symptoms. For example, Staphylococcus aureus, that's our bacteria, Bacillus cereus, that's the rice bacteria. One way of remembering that one, the rice bacteria, Bacillus cereus. Rice is a cereal. So cereus, cereal, quite similar sounding words. These generally produce toxins in food, generally cause vomiting, and is a quick onset. In other words, the food poison happens quite quickly. With Compilobacter, Salmonella, E. coli and Clostridium, these originate in the gut, generally cause diarrhea but not vomiting, and is a slower onset, so it takes a longer time to develop. On the next slide, I'm going to show you some food poison bacteria, where they come from, and the food we tend to associate them with. You might want to make a note of this slide because questions quite often come up on where the bacteria are found and what food they tend to affect. First of all, let's look at the bacteria. Salmonella, E. coli, Clostridium, Bacillus cereus, Listeria and Compilobacter. We'll find those in raw meat, water, soil and sewage. Staphylococcus aureus we'll find in us. We are the natural reservoir for Staphylococcus aureus. Salmonella you tend to find in poultry and eggs, although if eggs have got a lion stamp on these days, it's unlikely that there's any infection with salmonella. And poultry, you're most likely to find poultry infected with Compilobacter and not salmonella. And Compilobacter is the major cause of diarrhea in the UK today. E. coli, we'll tend to find that in meat, vegetables and fruit. With meat, you tend to find it in meat because in insanitary conditions in abattoirs where you've got a lot of faecal spillage and intestinal spillage, this goes on to the clean meat which is then sent to butchers and supermarkets for us to eat. So that's likely to be infected. Vegetables, anything with soil contamination will have E. coli. So if you're using vegetables, you're going to use them raw and then make sure you wash the vegetables well to get rid of all soil contamination. If the vegetable is going to be cooked, that's not a problem because the cooking will kill the bacteria. The other thing, fruit. Where fruit is picked by human hand, it's got the potential to have an infection of E. coli. This is because if you think of it on large fruit farms where fruit is picked by lowly paid fruit pickers, there are no toilet facilities. Or if the toilet facilities are around, they're probably hundreds of yards from where they're picking the fruit. So they'll go to the toilet behind the hedge, they'll not wash their hands, so all faecal contamination on their hands is transferred then to the fruit that they pick in. Things like pears, apples, strawberries, grapes, etc. So always make sure you wash your fruit well. Clostridium we tend to associate with large joints of meat, large pots of stock, soup or gravy. Bacillus cereus, the main one there to remember is rice but it can infect some pulses and cereals. Listeria, we tend to find in unpasteurized foods such as patties, cheeses and milks etc. Compilobacter in poultry and in live birds. So be careful if you ever see pecked milk bottle tops for example, don't drink the milk. It's likely to be infected with Compilobacter as is most of the poultry that you buy these days which I've already mentioned. Staphylococcus aureus you'll find in any food that's been prepared by humans. For example, pre-prepared foods like cakes, salads, sandwiches, baguettes, etc. Where 
people might have touched, handled, coughed or sneezed over the floor.